Hey, hello, and welcome to the show and tell. This is one of the possibly many show and tells that we have every week from Adafruit. I'm John Park, and I am broadcasting here from my studio. Uh, we have a, uh, a great, uh, oh gosh, we have audio feedback. Hold on, let me, let me find the window. There's an errant window. <laughs> this happens sometimes. There we go. I found you. Uh, YouTube likes to sneak up on, on you like that. Uh, so we have uh, a number of show and tells happening every week, as well as a lot of other great live streaming content. Uh, and uh, what we'll do today is bring on a couple of people uh, who have some things to show and tell. If you would like to bring something on to show and tell, please come on over. Uh, all you need to do is head over to the Adafruit Discord, and you'll see a link there for the show and tell. You can go to the Adafruit Discord by typing in adafruit.it slash discord in your browser to uh, get a, the, the instant invitation link and go join up. Uh, and we also have a blog post up on the Adafruit blog if uh, you need more information or you're wondering where to watch this. But uh, if you're wondering where to watch this, how do you know that I've even asked? Weird. Uh, all right. So first up, we have got Todd Bot, uh, who has something to show us. Let me bring on our good friend Todd Bot. Hey, oh <laughs> how you doing? So, oh so um, I decided to make a little Eurorack module, and uh, Eurorack is a modular synthesizer te technology. Um, and what this is is it's it's almost the simplest microcontroller Eurorack module that can exist. It's a Adafruit trinket and two capacitive sense buttons. And when you push the buttons, they uh, light up the LED that's built onto the, the trinket. And then um, when you press those buttons, it sends out a voltage via the two outputs that are available. And these are just 3.3 volt outputs, even though your rack goes like minus 12 to plus 10, or sorry, minus 10 to plus 10. Um, it will still work for, for, many, for many other modules. So there's one analog output on the trinket. And so that's hooked up to the A button and the A output. And the B button just does a, what's called a gate, which is sort of a digital just on off. And so, um, with that, and it's all it's all programmed in CircuitPython. And uh, let me switch the camera here so I can give you a view onto my rack. And so here's the module all wired up. Hello, it's my finger. And so um, right now I've got the B button hooked up to a drum sound. So when you hit it, hopefully you can hear that. Um, and then I'm going to trigger a synthesizer sound because this is hooked up to a, a filter. So it'll like change the filter sound. And so I'm gonna play the sound and then I'm gonna uh, let you, uh, let, uh, then I'm gonna change the, the filter cutoff. Okay, and so uh, the cool thing there is that um, you can actually get an analog value out of the touch sensor if you look at the raw value in the touch IO uh, circuit python library and you sort of calibrate that on power up with like sort of the in initial value and stuff so normally you just get an on off but um but if you look carefully i'm adjusting the brightness of the led based on the sort of amount you're touching the button and so this gives you a continuous voltage uh, a cv that you can use to to modulate other sounds in your urx synthesizer system and um, so yeah, so it's a very simple module. I put instructions on the back on what you need. Uh, it's, it's all up on GitHub, so if, you, if anybody else wants to play along. That is super awesome. I love it. Uh, as, uh, as you know, I'm a big Eurorack fan. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm wondering, are you going to produce these or just place, uh, place the PCB uh, design up there for other people to, uh, to go make their own? Yeah, they, you they know, really like I don't know if I want to get into the whole the whole uh deep deep well of actually producing your rec modules for other yeah. people i mean one of the things is that this goes against a lot of the precepts of making a safe your rec module um you can plug the power in backwards you can uh potentially if you if you plug inputs into here you could fry the trinket because normally uh, any jack you can plug into input or output and your rack modules don't care. They'll like protect themselves against that. So this has right. none of the protections. It's uh, yeah. it's it's literally like eight components, including all of the jacks and everything yeah. else. So it's, yeah, so it's kind of super minimal. Uh, <laughs> yep, totally DIY and uh, gloves are off. So uh, use it your own risk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> Excellent. And where can people find details uh, such as me? Because I want to go uh, order one. <laughs> well, I, I've made a few PCBs, so so I might put those up somewhere. But also, all the design files are up on GitHub. Um, both the the Eagle design files, the Gerbers, and the uh, the CircuitPython code.py. So GitHub.com slash Toddbot. Is that slash you? trinket trigger? Yeah. <laughs> oh, slash trinket. Tr so Toddbot trinket trigger. Yeah. Okay. I'll uh, I'll put a link in the Discord. Over in the Discord, that'd well. be excellent. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Very uh, very nice. I I like the idea. I've I've used some uh, Arduino based modules in Eurorack before, as well as mm -hmm. um, uh, Circuit Python module. I've used as the uh, uh, Soul Winterbloom Soul mm -hmm. uh, by Stargirl, and uh, there's something nice about getting more Circuit Python into Eurorack. So thank you. Thank yeah, you I can't. Much. I. I, I yeah, I can't wait to get to I can't wait to get the Soul module because that's like that's like a proper Circuit Python Eurorack module. <laughs> yes, that's all the all the uh, protections and efforts and uh, trickery and and uh, voltage full range and all that. So. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, bye. All right, uh, and then we have uh, also got Scott. So let's bring Scott on and see what he's got today. Hey, Scott. Hello. Uh, first and foremost, I'm streaming right after this at about three. So uh, if folks are watching this, you should stick around and we'll uh, do some we'll do some discussion about um, I squared C and spy and UART and the differences between those things mm -hmm. and why you may want to use one or the other. And then we'll dive into uh, or at least start the implementation of that for the ESP32 S2. Hey, speaking uh, of that, can I ask you a quick question? Totally. So I was noticing uh, this was a this Pimeroni Kibo um, board mm -hmm. that I showed today on my live stream. I've I've adapted it to use a um, uh, itsy bitsy. Uh, nice. Originally it was for a Pi Zero, uh, mm -hmm. and everything's working well. Having a lot of fun with it, and then I noticed something I never noticed on the board before. There is a little uh, sort of breakout at the very end of the Kibo, which I think is an I squared C. Breakout. It's got uh, hmm. yeah. It's got 3.3 volt ground uh, SCL SDA. Mm -hmm. So I've never seen them mention what that's used for. But that means I could kind of plug any I squared C device I want into the end of this thing, and then right. use, I think there's probably some standard um, uh, header pins for the uh, Pi layout that I could then run over to the itsy bitsy. I'm guessing, right? Yeah, perhaps. I don't know much about Raspberry Pi stuff, but yeah, uh, it's definitely I squared C and I squared C. You can have multiple devices on the same right. bus, though. So. Yeah, interesting. It's probably right. just the Raspberry Pi I squared C bus is my guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, have you got anything you uh, wanted to show I, today? I do. I, I could show off some ESP stuff, but I actually got uh, this in the mail. It's a Teensy 4.1. Um, but uh, Paul sent it to me specifically to make it easier for me to test the pin outputs. Um, in Circuit Python, so this is just a regular dev board, and it's got it's it's hard to see because I haven't messed with webcam settings yet. But there, it's just resistors uh, like SMD resistors and SMD LEDs. And I just got an email back from him because I had actually forgotten that he was sending this to me. But uh, he mentioned to me in an email that he had actually programmed it for me uh, using Arduino. To as a way to verify that all the pins are working. So this just does like a Larson scanner style increment through all the pins and make sure that the LED turns on, um, which is super handy and uh, something that I should take the time to just replicate in CircuitPython to verify that they are indeed all working. So huge out to uh, shout out to Paul from Teensy for sending me that and. Uh, the TNT41 looks really, really cool, and uh, people should take a look at it. I think it's $27, and we have it on the Adafruit shop, um, although I'm not sure it's still in stock. Um, but we are shipping uh, orders now as well. So I'm just making sure that it's on here. Yeah, I didn't check. I didn't know if we had listed those or not. Uh, yeah, they're coming soon is what it they're says. They're coming soon, right? Yeah. So what is the yep. on the what's the board uh, connected to there? You've got like a little backplane of some kind. Is that a yeah? We can look at it. It's got um, so the 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 black is just like black anti-static foam, and I think he sent it with that because there's 
pointy um, headers coming out the bottom of this. But this looks like just kind of like similar to a feather doubler is what it looks like. Um, just like the, that form factor times three. So the, the middle one is not connected at all. So it's just very connecting cool. Yeah, it all over cool for, for uh, getting in and, and uh, debugging stuff. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Do you have plans with the uh, the Trinket for one things you've wanted to do that this opens up? Um, I mean, I have somebody was pointing me to some FPGA stuff and I just replied like, I'm sorry, I have way more stuff that I'm interested in than I know that I have time to do with it. <laughs> and um, the IMX RT, which is the chip on here, is kind of like in that boat for me right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's by far the fastest microcontroller that CircuitPython supports. It's got the most RAM. It's got, um, it's just in a really beefy chip. And there's some really cool peripherals, like the ability to d drive displays that are 24 bit, like basically one pixel of data every clock. So they can be pretty big. They're similar to the displays that you would attach to like a Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. um, like we want to be able to support those. Um, and this has like high speed USB as well. So it would be able to do like video over the USB link or audio over the USB link. Like there's all this stuff that I want to see done with it. It's just like ESP32 S2 came out and that's our priority. Mm -hmm. And Lucian's working on the IMX RT, um, but he's doing more of the fundamentals right now. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's lots of stuff I'd love to do. Like yesterday I was complaining about my overhead camera and theoretically, with a chip like this IMX, I bet we could do an overhead camera with CircuitPython oh, wow. if we had camera support and USB video support. Mm -hmm. um, it's just connecting the two up, right? So right. Um, there's no shortage of things that we <laughs> could do in the future with CircuitPython if we had support for for yeah, all the stuff that we've got. Yeah, you pick a project and uh, solve the things you need to, to get that one to work and then move forward. So. Yeah, I think the way I work is, it, and CircuitPython in general, I think, kind of inherits that. Although now we're being able to be more parallel, is that I circle th through things. So like I spent a lot of time on USB initially, and then mm -hmm. I didn't get it all the way where I wanted it. But at some point, I'll circle back to that. And Beely kind of had that process, and Display mm -hmm. had that process, where you do some of it, you get it to a certain point, and you move off because you're sick of it, and <laughs> um, there's other stuff to do. So uh, we'll get back to the IMX RT. Um, I mean, Lucian's working on it and Arturo's working on it. So there is some progress being made there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of just like we're splitting between that and the ESP and the remaining Bluetooth stuff. So mm -hmm. um, it's all making slower progress than if we were all doing the, the one thing. But it's also way easier to coordinate if we're doing like more separate Discreet. things. Yeah. 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 Right. So um, no particular plans for that. But um, it was a nice thought for from Paul just to, as a way for us to verify that like this support that I added is correct, mm -hmm. um, which I should do. Uh, but besides that, I don't have any any explicit plans. Right on. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thanks uh, for bringing that on and uh, remind people what's coming up next. Yeah, next up, we're going to I've been doing deep dive streams where I spend about two hours um, talking about the ESP32 S2 and moving CircuitPython to a new platform. And then I basically start, like, try to do a little bit of work on towards the end of the stream. Um, so today I've started I squared C support and I'd love for to get that finished, um, which reminds me I should grab an I squared C sensor before <laughs> the stream. Um, but my, uh, the folks who watch my stream are pretty chill. They don't mind if I like <laughs> wander off into the laundry room. Where, <laughs> yeah, where I go get something or anything. So it's been really fun. I've got really good feedback um, from folks that they like the deep dives. I'm always like, does somebody want to watch me like <laughs> program for two hours? Um, and it turns out that there's there's a few people uh, that enjoy like seeing process of of complicated stuff like that. So yeah, um, it's kind of something I'd like to do through the ESP32 S2 support, mm -hmm. um, and particularly when everyone's staying at home. Uh, whether I continue after that, we'll see. Um, but Excellent. I do enjoy it. Good. So, yeah, right, it's, so it, I should say it's usually on Fridays at two p.m. Um, but it's a holiday weekend here in the U.S., so I'm taking mm -hmm. Friday off. So I moved it 
23 hours early so that I would go after your streams. Great. Good for you. Excellent. Good for you to take a, a holiday and still observe the calendar in some form. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was I was debating what I was going to do with four days. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to go see my folks. And then uh, I, I was telling you before the, the live stream, I've got this idea that has nothing to do with Adafruit, but is very interesting to me. And I kind of want to just obsess over it for the next four days. So I may, I may actually do that. Good. Good for you. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thanks so much for coming on and uh, have a good live stream. We'll see you. Yeah, thanks. All right, that's it. That wraps it up for today. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, don't forget, we also have the uh, full hour long live stream next Wednesday, uh, which is, uh, I think I'll be running that one next Wednesday uh, as uh, Lamore and Phil will be uh, doing some uh, official crime fighting down at City Hall in New York. Uh, virtually over the cameras, I think. Uh, so uh, that'll be that'll be next uh, next Wednesday evening's show and tell. And uh, we'll put up a blog post about that. Uh, and you can come on and bring your projects. All right. Thanks, everyone. And uh, I'll see you next time.